están amigos? Welcome to another episode of ChristianPodcast.com Ajá, uh -huh. today we have a special guest, Keiton García And we're going to be speaking in English That's the official <laughs> language for today's episode That's right, so Keiton, you have a crazy story We've known you for... A while now, you're part of Love Costa Mesa. Mm -hmm. You're part of Trellis, and that's kind of like where we first met you, right? Yeah. In this role of uh, the prayer initiative. So we're going to maybe discuss prayer, but we want to get to know your story. We want to get to know your heart you know, for Jesus, for the city. And But before we do that, how are you guys doing? ¿Cómo estás el día de hoy, Mili? I'm so you? happy today, Beto. Was, was, uh, I had a tough morning because the devil was attacking me. You know, look, at you, look what, what are you doing? Do, 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 you know how he loves to put us down? Mm -hmm. And I was like, a ver, wait a minute. Get out of here. Right? What's he saying? Like, you and your podcast or what? <laughs> no, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, I kick him out. Like, you know what? You have no power here. You know who I am? Because this <laughs> Sunday I was uh, during worship praying and I asked God who I am. And I have this vision when David, uh, King David was in his knees, you know, crying because uh, his wife was pregnant and he was lost in the baby, something like that. Remember mm -hmm. that story? <laughs> and somehow he told me, Millie. You're my daughter. I'm the same God, you know, and we have we can have the same relationship. How I was having relationship with David, I can have that with you. <gasps> mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, are you <laughs> kidding me? Really? That close I am with you? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're my daughter. I see you. Wow. No, it was, yeah. was beautiful. And then I saw him in heaven, Jesus, standing up. Wow. And right after, our pastor started telling us, a reading, um, he was reading, but to remind me. Oh, he read like... No, 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 but the first one. Like a thousand verses. Uh, <laughs> Matthew? No, 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 it was not Revelation. Matthew. Revelations. Okay. And he, he, that's how he started. Like, he's standing up in heaven next to the Father. You're like, ah, wow. <laughs> going crazy. Wow. Like, wow. Yeah, so, yeah, this morning I was reminding myself and my son, The same thing, you know, he went and played soccer yesterday. He played so bad and he was like, what a shame. Probably my team can do better without me. They win 6-1. Wow. And he was crying because I did nothing. And like, you know, it, I mean, we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And you just have the opportunity to be better and better and better. Yeah. It's okay. Sometimes we have bad days. Yeah. You know, but don't believe what the devil is telling you. Yeah. Like, you're not worth it. You know, like, mm -hmm. please stop playing. But yeah, so I'm so happy to be here and to, rec to so I have the power to recognize who's talking to me. That's good. So I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. And I know that God um, brought us here for a purpose. And I'm so thankful that you are here with us Thank today. You. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. I know you're a busy guy. You have like two jobs <laughs> plus a wife. Yeah. Eh? He's married mm -hmm. with a beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. huh? Remind me her name. Ariana. Ariana. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's gorgeous. Yeah. And Millie loves to change people's names. So she already called you Kenton. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that earlier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, everybody. Okay. Have you ever had a bad day? Oh, yeah. Yesterday was hard. Why? Yesterday... Um, I got back from a camping trip mm. and I was so tired and I was in a bad mood and then I got home and we forgot to plan our worship set for Sunday and we start worship at four. Well, we start practice at one thirty at your church. Yeah. And then Ari and I got in an argument mm. at one. One in the morning? No, one in the day. Oh. So I got back at like maybe 11. Okay. I was tired. I was not in a good mood. Then 1.30, we get in an argument. We have to be at church. One o'clock, we get in an argument. We have oh, to be your at church, church is at, in, the, in the afternoon. Yeah. We okay. have to be at church at 1.30. Wow. So we had to humble ourselves and pray together. Ooh. It was really hard. 
Yeah. <laughs> and the well, thanks for sharing. Yeah. The we're getting your, your wife is um. It's also like uh, so. Tell us about that. You like what role do you have in worship? Do you play instruments? And that's your yeah. wife. Yeah, my wife is a more gifted musician than I am. Mm. Um, she's a worship leader and she plays piano too. And she has like her own music out and everything. Oh wow. Um, I also have music out, but my role is basically I just, whenever people need me, I'll just go lead worship. Mm. Um, so I play guitar and I sing. At your church? Yeah, my church. So we have nice. four worship leaders and we rotate every week. We have one different person every week. Oh wow. Yeah, That's it's, nice. It's great because we have a lot of really, really good musicians there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, <laughs> it sounds like it. you were saying um, one of the teaching or pastors there was John Mark Comer. Yeah, well, he wasn't a pastor. He was just um, taking a break. Oh, really? After being just at listening. Bridgetown. Yeah, hanging out and then just being a part of the church and being wow. with everyone, which is great. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, so these are just interesting questions to me. Yeah. Do you, um, do you have a sense like at this church, I don't know, the teaching, if a pastor of that caliber comes to be mm -hmm. taught, yeah is the teaching amazing or what or it's just the community <laughs> or <laughs> um i don't know if it was i mean i think that our teaching is incredible but i also think there's so many really gifted teachers in orange county mm. he could have picked any anyone but i think it was the relationship between um our pastor's family and his family that mm. was already already there the friendship was already there and he probably just found it to be a good place to come and just rest for a year after, you know, being busy, obviously being a pastor and writing and everything. So I think it was more the relationship. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as you're telling us about, you know, good and bad days that we've all had, uh, what, what makes you upset? What makes you exciting? Like, what are your, <laughs> your two ends of the spectrum when it comes to, you know, that? Yeah your attitude and you know, what makes you balance to either one? Yeah. Um, I think I'm learning now. First of all, I need to always have food. I need to eat. Okay. <laughs> like a pregnant woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah That's I need how to, we are. I need to be eating. If I <laughs> skip breakfast, I'm so hungry and I just can't think there's wow. that. And then, um, when I'm in a busy season, like you guys know, we just had one voice mm -hmm. on Thursday. Mm -hmm. That's our citywide prayer and worship night that we do every year. And um, there's a lot that goes into it. And especially as it gets closer, even if everything's planned out, I still get stressed. Mm. Mm. Like even if everything's perfect, I'm still stressing because I want it to go well. Like more than perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and I level. want it to be better every year. So yeah. I get stressed and I think yeah. I just start to just make, imagine different things in my mind and can't sleep and everything. And then I'm tired and then I don't feel good and I don't yeah. have a good attitude. So that's, that's the spectrum <laughs> of the feeling, I don't know, worry and anxiety yeah. maybe. Yeah. But what, what makes you balance, like come back to like, okay, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. I know things are going to turn out good. Yeah. My wife, Ari, and I, we have a really, really fun relationship. We we do a lot of stuff outside together. Like, we love to go camping. Mm. We love to go fishing. She's learning how to surf. I wow. love to surf. Oh, really? So that's, like, my outlet. Mm. Um, especially if I'm surfing at least three or four times a week, I feel, like, the best. Because I'm getting sun, I'm outside, and I'm exercising. And mm. it just feels, like, really calm. Like, you're out there, and you're sitting, and you're waiting for a wave, and you're just relaxed mm -hmm. and you see it in the morning because i most surfers i know they go there like at four six five seven morning. something yeah, something crazy early. like that's never gonna happen i love it yeah <laughs> i've I only love been it. once and it was way too early man <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> like, you have to get used to it yeah. seven was too early for you beto <laughs> come on <laughs> no it was earlier than that it was <laughs> I don't remember, but it was like five or something. Oh, I mean, yeah. and you're in the water, right? In California water, it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, no. And then, yeah. my, I, so just in my favor, I was wearing a, one of those wetsuits. Wet yeah. 
but it was really tight because it was borrowed. Okay. So the thing on my neck was like almost like suffocating oh, me. Oh, yeah. So it was really hard to move and be in the water. I was like, Ugh. Yeah. And so I don't know that I loved it, but it was, it was, it felt like it could have been really good. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard. Like I'm teaching Ari in the first, first or second time she got stung by a stingray. Oh, no. And she said it was the worst pain she's ever <gasps> felt in her life. And she was about to pass out. And then the oh, no. one of the second times we went in the middle of the day and here it's not very windy. Like if you're two, three miles off of the coast, it's not very windy, but then you get to the, to the water and you can feel the wind a lot. So we drove like 30 minutes. She had to carry this big surfboard and she's little, so it was hard for her to carry it. Then she gets there and it's super, super windy and she's just getting blown and blown and blown and the water's splashing in her face. That was like the second time. And I was trying to help her, like teach her. I'm like, no, no, do this, do this. And, you know, I'll push you and keep she paddling. never sur surfed before? Yeah, she had oh. never surfed. <clears throat> and that was awful too. So the first two times she went were Like, just... I'm done. That's not for me. <laughs> yeah, but luckily she's been pushing through, which is really good. Nice. Yeah. Wow. So that yeah. gives you, that kind of like brings you back to like a good, happy place. Yeah. Of some I sort. love it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So tell us about uh, Trellis. Okay. So mm -hmm. you just had the event and love Costa Mesa, right? Or actually, let's just start right there just so that we don't confuse people, right? Because it used to be called Trellis, but now it's called love yeah. Costa Mesa. And now they have different kind of like branches into different cities. Yeah. And then we can talk about prayer and the significance of that in your life. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, just tell us about Trellis and how it. You no, know, has different outreach. Yeah. Now. Do you want me to share the full story or like short? The short one you story. want. Okay. <laughs> I'll share like in the middle. Okay. So tr Trellis has been around for about 12 years officially, but it started with a group of pastors that were praying together. You, you know, a lot of the pastors in the city, you guys know them. Um, but they were praying for about 25 years together for the city. And then they realized, okay, we need to do something about the things we're praying for. We keep praying <laughs> but we're not taking action. Mm. So Ian, he was working at the Crossing Church off of Newport Boulevard in Costa Mesa. And um, he was their outreach pastor at the time. And he was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna commit to this. So he left that role there. He had their blessing to leave. And he decided that he was gonna do this full time. So he helped, you know, fundraise, gather people together to do different projects and everything. And little by little, it started evolving. At first, it was just praying mainly for the homeless because that's m kind of the biggest problem pretty much everywhere in the United States, but especially in California um, and Costa Mesa. And they started to identify different issues other than just homelessness, because homelessness is a surface level issue. It's not a root issue. The root of homelessness is usually like financial crisis, mental illness or isolation, um, or even education, a lack of education that causes people to go down that road. So then we branched off and we had a neighboring initiative, which basically just means like the neighbors are connected together. So nobody feels alone, nobody's isolated. And then the other one was the education initiative, which was basically getting into the school systems, helping the churches connect <clears throat> with the schools so that the schools feel supported and the kids have a better education. Um, so that existed. And then they had people doing prayer events and leading prayer um, and that's kind of when I came along and we started the prayer initiative and the prayer initiative is bringing the body of Christ together to pray in and for the city, because that's the root of all of the issues like isolation, mental health, um, lack of education, homelessness, drug use, all of those things. If we're praying for our city mm -hmm. and people are having their spiritual needs met, then all the other needs are going to be met too. So that's kind of the foundation of what we do. Um, and after a few years, we started realizing that there were other cities that were wanting to use the same model that we were going that we were using and it was going really well in Costa Mesa so we decided to use Trellis as kind of the overarching organization for Orange County and we borrowed um, a model or a name from an organization in Modesto called Love Modesto mm. so we're connected with them in some ways, not in a lot of ways, but they're friends and everything. Um, and we have a similar name to them. 
They're Love Modesto. We're Love Costa Mesa now in Costa Mesa. And Trellis is like overarching Orange County. And we're connected with a few others, others in Orange County like Love Irvine, Love Tustin, Love Orange. We just launched a new one called Love Mission Viejo. Last year we launched Love Newport or maybe two years ago we launched, launched Love Newport. Um, and there are other Love Costa Mesas in other cities now and Trellis is overseeing some of them and then also helping support mm. some of the other ones. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So from my understanding, right, because like you said, I know a lot of the pastors involved mm -hmm. in Trellis and, and this whole, you know, pastors gathering and starting to pray for change in their city. One of them being our pastor, yeah. <laughs> Pastor Mike. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to go from an initiative or not an initiative. It's kind of hard to go from like, a desire to pray and then actually making it an organization that has yeah. tentacles and legs and yeah. moves and almost like stand on its own. Yeah. That's, that's hard. But at the same time, I feel like God's been faithful, you know, to see it that it now has, like you're saying, you know, there's more cities that want to be involved. Mm -hmm. It's no longer just like trellis as like the main love Costa Mesa thing. And yeah. it has so many uh, areas of impact or, or, influence in the city, right? That we're super aware of, but I, I guess, you know, today I want to focus on, on like the prayer specifically, but yeah. just tell us a little bit, like real quick, the, like love Costa Mesa, love Irvine, love Orange, like all these different ones. What is it that they do, right? They, how mm -hmm. do they love <laughs> their city basically? Yeah. Um, the model that we have in Costa Mesa, I think it changes a little <laughs> bit from city to city because other mm -hmm. people are leading it. Um, our role in Love Orange and Love Irvine is mainly just to support them, like just to be friends and help them when they need our help. In Mission Viejo and in Newport, we're overseeing them um, with our organization. So we have a little bit more of a voice in that area. Um, but the model of Love Our Cities in general is basically helping meet the needs of the city and connecting all the parts together. Mm. So a lot of nonprofits will meet one need, like for example, there's homeless nonprofits everywhere, right? And what they're trying to do is they're either trying to house the homeless, create a pathway for them to get back into home, into homes, um, meet may, maybe some mental health needs, or or give them meals. Um, and then you have prayer ministries that usually just pray for whatever God puts on their heart, which is great. But then you have all these other ones, like you have. YMCA and you have all these other nonprofits, but they're usually not very connected. Like they're doing their own thing. Like the homeless people are feeding the homeless, giving them housing. The prayer people are praying anything the Lord puts on their heart or what their church needs and all that stuff. The education people are usually just taking care of the schools. But if everyone's talking and everyone's connected, then the prayer people know what to pray for. They know how to pray. They know the names of the people that are involved that are creating the change in the homeless area and the neighboring area and the education area. Um, and we found that our prayers become more effective because we're actually connected with all the other, like, like you were saying, the different parts and the different legs of the city. And it actually influences and makes everyone better because there's more connection. So that's the model that kind of goes from city to city and now is similar in Orange and in Irvine and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to dive into that, the prayer, you know, yeah. and feel free to say anything you want yeah, at any point, Millie. Normally, okay. Beto was like, Millie, you have questions. Millie. And now <laughs> he doesn't allow me to ask okay, questions. Okay, sorry. Jump in at any time, Millie. <laughs> That's okay. Jump in at no, any no, time. No, no, no. I just, you know, you can finish your segment because <laughs> I really want to know him more. You know, okay. he have a beautiful testimony. Okay. The second time I met him, he put me on my place. Like, mm. <laughs> like Millie, you need to stop saying that. And you literally go, I, like, uh, I don't remember you know, that. <laughs> he doesn't remember that. I don't forget about it because like, oh, you're right. You know, like we always learn from each other. Okay. And if, yeah, we would uh, like to no, touch that a, part. But you yeah. finish your segment okay. about Love Costa Mesa, <laughs> yeah. which I love and trellis and these beautiful organizations yeah. that help a lot. Because prayer, it's insane. I mean, God can put his eyes on us and have mercy of us through prayer, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. No, I think the reason is like you've saying you're saying words that are so interesting to me because prayer is hard. Mm -hmm. Like especially uh, maybe for me, right? Like I've been a Christian all my life. Yeah. And probably prayer is the hardest thing to be consistent in my walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But you used a word that was really interesting. You said it makes prayer more effective. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that just blows my mind because <laughs> I feel like I feel like what you're saying is almost like prayer is connected to action. You know? So yeah. if if you start seeing action happen and you know people maybe get in house or people, you know, leaving their mental illness or things like that. It's like, oh, wow, it's effective, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. prayer goes from measure. <laughs> measure, yeah. Mm -hmm. It goes from just an idea like, oh, I wish things were better. Like I pray because that's a typical phrase we hear all the time. You know, I'm sending my thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Well, are, are they making <laughs> an impact? And how mm. do we know? How do we measure yeah. if they're making an impact? Yeah. And and I love the the beauty of... It's going to make an impact when those thoughts and prayers start having interconnections with other people that are yeah. maybe also praying or maybe also have the desire to see their city change, mm -hmm. right? So it's when you put those together that you start to see flourish. Yeah. And so anyways, that's to me, that's that's really mind blowing, you know, because I agree with you. You know, there's there's a pastor here in the corner praying for something. And there's another pastor here praying for another thing. And it's almost like if you only knew each other, mm -hmm. you could fulfill each other's needs and yeah. it would be effective. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think that it's important to be the answer to the prayer that you're praying, mm -hmm. not just to pray about it. But I, but I think at the same time, once you're starting to work in the area that you're praying for, then you get to know that area even more and you know how to pray mm. better. So for example, About two years ago, we started doing this prayer bike-a-thon where we'd do all 17 miles of the perimeter of Costa Mesa. And the first time I walked, it was hard and my legs were about to fall off at the very end. Um, but I got to see all this different streets and neighborhoods. Because you walked 17 miles? Yes. Wow. And I had never done it before. I just went cold turkey and I just did it. Yeah. So you got to How see... How many hours? I think it was like eight. Wow. wow. Yeah. Crazy. That's a lot. I mean, that's that's like more more than half a marathon, not quite a full marathon. Yeah. But walking. Walking, yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. That's a lot. And I didn't train at all, but Wow. Um <laughs> that was a bad decision. But I I was walking through these different neighborhoods and usually we'll pray for them on our list, but I got to look at them and I got to see the people that were working at the different stores or the people that were outside of their house and The car is going by and usually when you're driving, you just, you're looking at the lights, you're looking at your GPS, hopefully not, you're like, hopefully you're not looking at your phone, but sometimes looking at your phone, Never. you're thinking about, Never. <laughs> you're thinking about where you're going, but you're not thinking about what you're driving by. Mm. So as you're walking, you get to see mm. what the city actually looks like when you're on the ground well. mm. and it teaches you how to pray differently well. because you have a different sense of That's true. What, yes. what the city is. And One of the things that people think is, yes, God is definitely going to hear our prayers, whether they're perfect or they're not perfect. But sometimes I wonder if there is a right way to pray and a wrong way to pray, then if there isn't a right way to pray and a wrong way to pray, then why did Jesus teach his disciples to pray? Mm -hmm. Why didn't he just say, oh, you could just do it however you want because mm -hmm. God's going to listen anyways. And I think to some degree that's true he's going to listen because he has mercy on us and he cares for us and he's not waiting for us to be perfect but at the same time i think there is a clear way to communicate with god that jesus provides for us mm -hmm. and there's also thousands and thousands of years of christians that have experienced god and got to know god that can teach us how to pray and pray mm -hmm. effectively too mm -hmm. um so i think So we put a lot of emphasis on biblical teaching, a lot of emphasis on worship and worship songs. But so often I heard this from a guy named Corey Russell. He, he always said to my wife, she went to school under him and he always used to tell her the church has made prayer into a side room ministry. Like mm -hmm. next to the kids area, there's a little prayer room, mm -hmm. but in history in Christian history, the prayer room was the center of everything that mm. people were doing, 
when they're going into the tabernacle, they're not going in to sing a chorus and a verse and a bridge and hear a 30 minute sermon. They're going in to meet with God and have conversation with him. Wow. And that's prayer. Uh-huh. So I've gone on this journey of, um, when I began, I had a passion for, for prayer because I've seen God do things through it, but I had no idea what I was doing. And I thought it was boring too. Mm. Um, like I have ADHD. I, I don't really like, I can't sit and think and just be quiet for an hour, like in a prayer meeting, I can't. But when I started learning different ways to pray, like the different history of prayer and everything, it became more exciting mm. and it became more effective. So like I was saying, like we have a list of prayer that we pray every month. We have um, city staff members named, we have police, fire, teachers, nonprofit names and all that stuff. And when you're praying specifically, the cool thing about that is you can actually measure the change in one year. Instead of saying, God, I ask that you would change our city. Like, would you please be in our city? Those are great prayers, but how are you going to measure that? Versus saying like, Lord, I ask that in one year, our city council will have at least three people that love you and know you closely. Mm -hmm. And then one year from now, you can look after an election and you can see who's in city council that loves you. And the cool thing is if you're praying for them by name and you tell them, Hey, I'm praying for you by name. They love that. Even if they're not Christian, if it makes them feel cared for, makes them feel loved. Mm -hmm. And now you have a relationship and you can talk to them and you can ask them, what are your prayer needs? And it actually changes things throughout time. So we've been able to measure the way that the city has changed because we're praying specifically. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's the importance of specific prayer. Yeah. And I love it. Okay. So now, Millie, take it away, because I know you want to go deeper into what is, maybe where does this come from, right, in in your upbringing, or how can we apply it relationally to one another? Because Millie is so good at that, you know, like mm-hmm. we talk, we talk all the theological stuff, and then Millie's practical. How good. how how is that going to help me love my neighbor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I just you know. Um, I know a little bit more about his background Mm -hmm. and I would love, you know, to listen in again because we all can relate, you know, like now Kenton is a leader and he's a prayer. Kenton. (laughs) Kenton. (laughs) Yo dije, ¿qué dije? (laughs) Kenton. All the time. Kenton. Se oye chido Kenton. (laughs) Kenton. Here's a little side story as you're saying that. When I first emailed Ian, I was looking for a job. And I'll probably get into this later, but he thought my name was Caitlin. Caitlin, like the the woman? (laughs) Yeah, because he read it, Caitlin, and then he just responded to my email. And then I got into the office the first day we met, and he was like, (gasps) You're the boy? He's like, You're not like a blonde white girl. I thought you were a blonde white girl. (laughs) Hey, Americans, how they called you? Beto, Betin, like. Uh, oh, yeah, ha- Humberto, Humberto, Berto, yeah, <laughs> like Beto. million. So <laughs> give me a chance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Kenton. Kenton. <laughs> Kenton. Okay. So he. What? What were you saying? Sorry, Emily. <laughs> oh, the story, story. The story. Yeah, yeah. the story. Yeah. Like you know, I I can look at him like oh i wish i can be him you know he's a leader and he is around a lot of leaders like having fun but it's not always that easy i know you have a background Mm -hmm. you know and god brought you from where yeah you know like tell us about your past your family yeah uh yeah yeah i can share that so um i'm just trying to think of where to start i could like many Hispanic families, you guys know, um, a lot of us usually experience a lot of poverty, especially in Mexico. And um, most Hispanic families have a specific way that they live. Usually the man is, you know, machista, usually drinks a lot of beer, that kind of thing. So our background, a lot of our family, um, especially grandparents and all that stuff, they kind of had that when we were, well, before I was born. And then my parents kind of landed in that. They were born into that. And unfortunately, a lot of those same patterns kind of still stayed. Um, 
at the very, very early years of my parents' marriage. And then fortunately, um, as we were driving from Chicago to Texas one day, um, we ended up in Texas with a family member who loved Jesus. And it was one of the hardest moments in my family's life. Um, we were struggling with like finding housing and um, living in an RV and all of that. And um, they invited us to a Christian Pentecostal Spanish speaking church. Uh, my family had only gone to a Catholic mass and I'm in relationship with a lot of Catholic people and I love them and they, they love to pray too. So as I've grown throughout the years, I've grown in my appreciation for Catholics too, but I mean. um, <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately the experience that my parents had was very, very cultural, um, like cultural Catholicism. They didn't really know Jesus. And we ended up at this church and my mom had, I think like $10 left for my family to have groceries for the rest of the month or the week or something like that. And they were talking about, you know, giving your all to Jesus. And they didn't ask her for her money. They weren't saying, you need to give us the money. But she felt in her heart that she needed to do that. So she gave the last $10 that we had. Um, and then a little bit later, we ended up with like a full uh, freezer full of food that somebody had provided for us. And we had no idea um, that that would come. But anyways, so my parents found Jesus there. And then after that, um, we, in, we landed in California, we went to a Spanish speaking Baptist church. And I was telling, actually, I was sharing this at one voice that, um, it was one of those churches where you can't, you can't stand up during the songs. Like you have to mm. sit and just kind of listen. It's very, very mellow, uh, very traditional. Um, and then after that, we ended up going to a Filipino church where everyone spoke Tagalog and we we're the only Mexican family that was there. And then we went to a white church after that, where pretty much everyone was white and we we're the only <laughs> Mexican family. White. Yeah. <laughs> they loved us. It wasn't like I was saying at one voice, they weren't intentionally all white, but they just happened to be a bunch of people that loved Jesus that were all white. And we were the only Mexican people there. And, um, after that, I also worked at a black church to a black Pentecostal church doing the audio and visual stuff for them too. And I had all these different church experiences growing up and um, I started to wonder why don't we really do anything together? So uh, there's, there's a story that I always tell when I was about six or seven years old, we were at a church where the Spanish service would start at maybe 11 and then the English service would be at maybe nine. So they'd, they'd end at like maybe 1030. And I knew that this was happening every single week. So they would do an English service, they'd pray, they'd, they'd sing worship songs, they'd open up scripture just like we did, but it was in English. And then after Sounds that, familiar. yeah. <laughs> and then we would come in and we would do our Spanish service and we were in the same building. We'd have the same screen that we'd use for our songs. We would sometimes even use the same microphone, same equipment, read the same Bible, sing similar songs, but just in Spanish to the same Jesus, to the mm -hmm. same Jesus. And I was like a six year old. I don't have any clue of, you know, the social dynamics or the cultural mm -hmm. dynamics and all that. And I asked the pastor, Hey, why don't we do stuff with them? Because aren't they worshiping the same Jesus? And unfortunately, whether it was like experiences that the pastor had had in the past that were really bad or something else, he said, they don't understand how we do things and we don't really understand how they do things. So just stay away from them. And as a seven year old, that really like gave me a lot of hopelessness. Like I, hmm. I didn't understand why. And it just made me think I was supposed to fear the people that were different from me hmm. and I was supposed to just stay away from them. But luckily I'm very stubborn <laughs> and I didn't do that. Um, then later on I'm experiencing all these different churches and then I decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to become a pastor. I'm going to go to theology school. I'm going to learn a bunch about the Bible, a bunch about Jesus. And then I'm going to go start a church. And then when I'm a pastor, I'm going to help all these other pastors learn how to work together. But as you guys know, that did not happen. <laughs> um, I did go to school at Biola. I studied theology, studied um, scripture as well. Wow. Um, and that was kind of probably one of the hardest times in my life. There's a lot going on with my family. 
um, a lot going on with me personally. It was the first time I was kind of out of the house too. And there's just a lot of things that the enemy was trying to do. And I didn't really have a lot of good community at the time. I was working at some churches, but it was, um, sometimes it was short. It was like an internship or, um, I was working at a worship leader for, for one church and I won't like share the name of them, but it was a pretty rough experience. Like, um, I felt very needed for my gifting in music, Mm. not necessarily for who I was as a person Mm. and especially as a college student with, yeah, with no community, with no family around, it was really hard and I was going through a lot of stuff personally. So, um, I ended up, you know, finishing off school actually during COVID and finding a church here in Costa Mesa, which is like 35 minutes away. Cause I would always come surfing here. And I was like, perfect. Like mm. I'll go to church and then I'll go surf or I'll go surf <laughs> and then I'll go to church. Right. Um, and then, um, I found that church and, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like skipping ahead during school. I asked this guy, one, one of my professors, Hey, um, why are there like all these different denominations? Cause it was like a church history class. And I was walking with him from like one class to the next class. And I said, why can't we just like all work together? Because obviously like in history, we started in the same place, but for some reason we've all ended up in all these different places, like with styles and expressions and theologies and doctrines and stuff We're we're very different now than we were before. And he said, you know what? Don't waste your time. It's, it's hopeless. There's a reason why denominations exist. And that really, really shook me because this was a a person that I really looked up to and somebody that had a lot more experience and knowledge about scripture than I did. And there was one second where I thought, well, maybe it is hopeless, you know? And I was kind of still on that same trajectory. I'm going to find a job at a church and I'm going to work there. And I knew from very early on, you know, since I was six or seven years old. And then again, I remembered that moment during that time when I was talking with that professor, that there is a reason why God had put me through all these different communities Mm -hmm. and taught me to love these different people that spoke different languages, Mm -hmm. that preached differently than sang, sang and prayed differently than I did. And luckily when I ended up at Genesis, they cared for me really well. They helped me remember like who I really was and Mm -hmm. what God had called me to do. And they were volunteering for trellis and they were doing events with them like every month they were helping with um, handing out food. And I heard a little bit about who they were and what they were doing. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I've been wanting to do my whole life. And I know that that's what I'm called to do with my life. So like I said earlier, I emailed Ian, you know, sent this whole thing about my experience, my calling, like what I really feel like God's calling me to do. And he said, hey, we already filled one of the roles, but why don't you come in and we'll talk. And that's when I came in and he looked at me, he was so confused because he thought my name was Caitlin <laughs> and I'm coming in a Mexican guy. Like, oh, but we have a job for a guy. <laughs> yeah, It was so funny. So I'm sitting with him and, and I'm telling him the same story. And all of a sudden he starts to cry. And I was so confused because I didn't really know mm-hmm. him. I don't know why he's crying. Mm-hmm. And he told me that for six months, him and one of our board members, they meet every Monday and Wednesday. And they had been praying very specifically. I think they even wrote it down. They prayed for a young Hispanic male with a theology degree to walk through the door and to take one of the roles that they had specifically for prayer. And at the time, their community was very small. They didn't know any young Hispanic males very well. So Ian was crying because he knew that that was the answer wow. to the prayer that they've that been. That's there. measurable. <laughs> yeah, wow. it is. Is is when you pray specifically, this. you can see <laughs> God answer those prayers. You know. Uh-huh. So then he told me all about this idea that they had. He was like, you know, we've been doing these prayer events, and we really want to create structure around it and make it a consistent throughout the year kind of thing where people can continue to be praying throughout the year. And he trusted me enough and gave me the freedom to do it. And now we're here. Wow. wow. See how beautiful it yeah. works. Yes. Yeah. He wired wire us, you know, in a specific uh, yeah. ways mm-hmm. so that we can continue with his job he had for us. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and I love when he say, 
your dreams are nothing compared what I have for you. Oh, yeah. And uh -huh. that is so hopeful, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not going to be with your own <laughs> power. No, it's through God's power who yeah. works in us yeah. and for us. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I, I learned were the things that I hated the most when I was growing up were the things that God's using right now. Wow. Like I did not like moving churches. Every time that we moved churches, I had to find new friends. Mm. I was trying to learn Tagalog because we went to the Filipino church. I was trying to learn a <laughs> wow. new language. Um, I had to learn these new songs that I didn't know. I was listening to mm. different preachers. The people that I trusted weren't there anymore. And I didn't like it growing up, but I, I know now that that was God's hand teaching me to love different people throughout the years so that I could now love the city really well. Mm. And like you were mentioning, um, we do a lot with leaders all the time. Like we're constantly around leaders. But one of the things that I think people don't often realize is sometimes leaders are the ones that feel the most isolated mm. and usually the most judged and criticized. So true. And they need the most care because they're caring for so many people, but they empty themselves out really quickly. Mm. Every week, like standing on a stage is exhausting. Mm. Like it takes so much out of you. And then you go home and you overthink everything that you did. And you're like, man, I could have done this better, could have done this better. And a lot of people are not praying for them. They're just telling them their prayer needs. They're saying, hey, hey, I need prayer for this. I need prayer for that. Or can you, can you help me with this? Can you help me move or whatever? But not a lot of people are caring for the leaders. So it's not my responsibility to care for all of them. I can't do that. Ian can't do that. Our executive director, no one can do that alone. But if we create an environment where they're caring for each other, mm then first of all, relationship builds, the fear of other denominations and cultures starts to leave because you know them better now mm -hmm. and you understand, oh, those things I thought weren't true. And also they get cared for by each other, which is really cool. And we have that in Costa Mesa. Wow. Yeah. I was trying to imagine, you know, um, I have friends around me and sometimes the way we are, right? We think that we need something, but in reality, is something else what really need. Mm -hmm. So only know, only God knows what exactly we need, right? Yeah. And that's what brought this image in in my in my mind. You know, I start walking with this new friend, and she's telling me, "Oh, I need money for this." I mean, like she's a single mother, mm -hmm. and but the the more I walk with her. I realized that what she needs in her heart is forgiveness, mm -hmm. right? And so in my walk with her, I, I know exactly how to pray for, because I know her better, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And not just superficially, like, oh, she needs money to pay the rent. No, it's more than that. Mm -hmm. She's unhappy because forgiveness is not part of her life. Yeah. Be when you forget someone, you are free. So I bring this to the to to trellis thing, to the prayer thing. You know, like mm -hmm. okay, I'm praying for the city, but I'm walking with the leaders. I'm knowing what's going on in the city, so mm -hmm. I, I I I can pray specifically yeah. for these needs. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, I think it helps a lot, and the more people that are exposed to what's really going on in churches and what people's needs mm. really are, I think the more compassion we have for yes. other people in yes. churches too. Because first of all, we realize, oh, that person's human. They're not the person I imagined that they were. And then second of all, you realize, oh, I have the same problems in my church mm. or the same issues in my life or in my neighborhood. And then you start to love them better because you experienced that before and you understand it. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it's been really, really cool being able to experience that. Wow. So you are, okay, going back to what I wanted to ask. Yeah. Um, Hispanic, because mm -hmm. you were saying uh, your family is Mexican. Yeah. And so you consider yourself Mexican? Uh, yeah. You say I'm Mexican? <laughs> like, or? Yeah, well, when people ask me, what's your ethnicity? I'm 100% <clears throat> Mexican. Where is your family from? <laughs> DF. Oh, Mexico okay. City, Mexico City, yeah. Mexico City. Uh-huh. Okay. So, okay, yeah. so that's interesting to me because... Where Costa Mesa, yeah. to me, is just a really, really interesting city Yeah, that I go back, like, my mom's side of the family moved to Costa Mesa, like, in the 60s or something like that, something like long ago, oh, wow. right? And they've been here ever since. 
they're um they're Catholic, you know, so they're you know, mm -hmm. part of San Joaquin. And I'm kind of like you, you know, like grew up to appreciate more like Catholicism mm -hmm. and not say, oh, you know, you're wrong. Yeah. Even though, like you said, there's also a lot of like cultural Catholicism. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, just the same the same way. There's a lot of you Christian know just culture. Christian you know, yeah. cultural Christians and stuff. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so that to say. I, I grew up in Guadalajara, coming to Costa Mesa for vacations, mm -hmm. right? Every now and then and visiting and just looking at the palm trees and stuff and like, wow, this place is beautiful. <laughs> I ended up living here. Yeah. So I've been almost half of my life wow. here in Costa Mesa at this point. So now looking back and like looking at trellis and the, like the history city, like almost like the spiritual legacy mm -hmm. of the city. To me, it's almost like mind blowing. It's like, wow, like a lot of things, a lot of good things God has done through through the city of Costa Mesa, yeah. right? Like the movement of Jesus Revolution, I always say, you know, mm -hmm. they, they painted it as it started in Newport Beach, <laughs> maybe because of the baptisms and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because it's cute. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but really, it is, I mean, it's here, yeah. It's, it's this area, right? And it's yeah. Costa Mesa, it was for sure part of it. And, to see what God is doing now, right? Like this uh, uh, trellis with Love Costa Mesa, but now like, hey, we can can we replicate that in different cities mm -hmm. and maybe adapt the same ideas to other cities? Yeah. I mean, to me, that's that's how God works, right? And it's almost like, a, in a sense, almost like a new revival mm -hmm. of some sorts, right? Yeah. And so all that to say, I feel like I'm part of that too, because, okay, here I am, another Mexican guy that comes to Costa Mesa, mm -hmm. just loves the city, starts to understand the spiritual legacy. And now we have a podcast right here in Costa yeah. Mesa. Awesome. And, and I try to think like broader than, than just this place, you know, cause you, like we were showing you the space, you know, before we made it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, that we were in in a little corner like doing the podcast and I always felt like really like there's um I just took almost like despise this place because oh it's old it's an old building it's run down it's like mm. on the bad side of town or things like that right that everybody can you know point at mm -hmm. and say oh for sure but then uh, one day some experience happened where I was praying and it was like the spirit overwhelmed me and I, this is, I mean, it's kind of like unrelated, but I was praying for somebody mm -hmm. and it was just like the spirit overwhelming. I'm like on my knees, like interceding for this person. And I feel mm -hmm. like intercession, it's almost like in the moment something's happening, right? I feel like intercession is more like where prayer is, it's kind of like a vision of where we're going or what we want God to do or the pieces we want him to move. Mm -hmm. I feel like intercession is like right now. Power somebody, is happening. Yeah, like somebody needs this prayer in this very moment. You're almost like quantum physics right there. <laughs> but uh, but anyways, I was praying and then out of that prayer, I, I just got this like overwhelming sense that God was saying, I can use this place. Wow. You know, like I, I can love people here. I can transform people here. And I went into the sanctuary, awesome. like the main sanctuary. And I was like just laying on the floor, like looking at the <laughs> ceiling. <laughs> and I was crying. I'm like, sorry, Lord, you know, like forgive me mm. for like, yeah. for for thinking you need a nice place. And then it just kept reminding me mm. like I was born in a manger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like Jesus was wow. born in a manger. Yeah. Mm. The place that nobody thought or like the king of the universe the yeah. god of the universe was born in one of the lowliest place mm -hmm. places mm. wow That's so awesome. anyways all that to say i feel like hey don't underestimate like little beginnings and i feel like in a sense this is what we're doing with the podcast you know we want to feature stories that will have almost like pick on that spiritual legacy of the city mm. and then influence the world because people are tuning in on the website like i see it every day you know people from like across the world and like Europe or mm -hmm. um, England, which is Europe. <laughs> That's the same one. I, I Latin America. Latin America, but I was trying to say um, like Australia, right? Mm -hmm. Or uh, South Africa and like other places where I'm like, okay, how can I... Because for a, for a season, I thought, oh, Christian podcast needs to be like this big thing, mm -hmm. right? And I think God's been saying like lately, hey, feature your local people, mm -hmm. you know? if I can If I can use the if I can use Costa Mesa as that kind of like springboard for big revivals, mm -hmm. why can't I use 
stories from this city yeah to spring and influence that's the great. world wow you know so i mean that's cool. why we loved having you and share <laughs> your story because i feel like yeah. it's not only getting to know you but it's hopefully inspiring people that are listening yeah that god is at work and maybe look at the spiritual legacy mm. where you live right because mm -hmm. god is a uh, god has always been at work yeah. you know like i always say like it's mind-blowing how the the magi right these people that came from the east to worship jesus when he was born or when he was little um we we don't really have a lot of background where they came from but they knew something was going on and they mm -hmm. wanted to be a part of it even from yeah. afar mm. right so that's where i'm like okay god is always at work he was clearly at work in the magi coming from who knows where yeah. <laughs> yes. right so people are listening from who knows where yeah, yeah. because god is at work in their and place being honest right here i'm uh -huh. always honest uh, but when i bring people to the podcast for me it's an excuse to be closer to you <laughs> you don't know that yeah. but i don't bring everybody mm -hmm. you know whatever random people no i just yeah. like i want to be part of what he's doing i just want to lift him up and through this more people can know you too and mm -hmm. pray for you but especially i feel like i just want to be part of your life mm -hmm. you know i i just invite one of my dear dearest friend and the same reason you know i want to lift her up and i want to learn from her and i just want to walk with mm -hmm. her and do up and, and actually we do a prayer thing oh, every cool. time we saw each yeah. other that's cool mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so one of the things that i want to share a little quick fun fact yes one of the things that you mentioned was that the jesus revolution yes began in costa mesa so we had been praying for maybe like pretty much the whole year when, since Ari and I got married, we ended up at this apartment that we hated so much. Mm. It was awful. There was rats and cockroaches. Oh, no. and people were stealing our laundry. We're part of Costa Mesa. Yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. And you just forgot to say, it's just down the street from here. No, <laughs> no it was, um, it was actually by like Rock Harbor. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, wow. Okay, there. That area. And it's a cute place. It's yeah, nice it's, yeah. area. And we just really needed to leave. And we finally ended our lease and we had been praying for months for a spot. We ended up finding a spot. It popped up 11 hours ago and then I clicked the application. I filled it out really quickly and then I sent it and I had my wife do it too. And we ended up getting it. It's a tiny, tiny place. Like most places here, maybe like 800 square feet. That's like average. Ours is 300 square feet. So think of like, three vans put together that's probably it's the size a tiny of home yeah basically and we didn't realize this until later but we started walking and praying the street when our application was in we were just praying that we would get the apartment and as we were walking down the street we saw a little church and it's called church street and i was like this is so weird like i looked up the history of the church that's the original church where chuck smith started to preach wow and was praying and that's where Lonnie Frisbee ended up going and wow. the whole Jesus Revolution started. So if you guys know that scene in the movie where... We need to go and visit that church. Yeah. Well, church that's Street, history. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. So I'll tell you some more about where it is now. It's a okay. little bit different now. But um, mm. so you guys remember that scene in the movie where he's preaching and then there's like the old people on one side. Yes. And yes. then the hippies on one oh, side. Oh, is that one? That's the building. They didn't. Oh, wow. I don't know if they used it oh, okay. for the movie. Mm -hmm. But that's the building that it was that it all started, and it's on the corner of Church Street and um, I don't remember the second. It might be like Walnut or something. You like think that. looks the same inside? I don't know. Kind of. It looks very similar I'm outside. Gonna go check I'm gonna it go. Out. Yeah. yeah, but we can see it from our window, so we're like four streets down. Wow. And I knew in that moment, okay, Lord, because we were thinking like, Lord, like our apartment is awful. Like, do you really want us here in Costa Mesa? Like, I'm questioning. God's plan for our life and we just got married and all that stuff. And I'm like, maybe we can find somewhere cheaper. And when we moved there, first of all, we learned like, if you really, really ask the Lord, he's going to meet all of your needs, even if it's in 300 square feet. Mm. Right. And then secondly, I'm looking at that church where like a lot of our history of Costa Mesa, mm. you know, church stuff started. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told me, I'm putting you on Church Street so you remember why you're here. You're not here for yourself. Oh. 
Like you're here for the church. Something big, yeah. bigger than you. <laughs> wow. Bigger than you. And it started way before you were here and it's going to wow. continue. I have chills. Yeah. It's not yeah. for you. So anyways, now they made it into a Baha'i temple, which is not Christian. Wow. So Baha'i people, they're very friendly, very loving people. But they don't believe that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Mm-hmm. They believe that any way is the oh, way. Oh, just kind of like, like the, the Pope. pope. <laughs> yeah. The Pope just yeah, announced the same. I heard that. Oh, my gosh. That broke my heart. Uh, um, but they're Baha'i now. Um, and every time I go around that corner, I pray for that church because I know the Lord's going to use it eventually. Mm. He might bring it back because there's a lot of legacy in that building. Not that a building doesn't really matter. It's more about what mm-hmm. God was Us. doing, but mm-hmm. it's just a piece of history that I think would be really cool if the church was able to use it again. But yeah, isn't that crazy? I love that. Yes. Yeah. That, that's how I feel about this, this church building and also, but also this room, like, I, I don't know, you know, but I feel like in this little corner right here, I always picture there must have been like a woman praying in like 1955 mm-hmm. on her knees, praying for the future believers that were yeah. going to be in this place, you know. That's so awesome. our prayer has been, you know, like God protect this place, but also, you know, catapulted like you said for your glory, you know, you said for, for your for your kingdom, Yeah. right? So I think that's what God is doing, but it's almost like recognizing the, almost like the holy ground Oh yeah, that you're in. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. And fortunately, we have a lot of great pastors. And actually, one of the pastors that is involved in Love Costa Mesa is the grandson of Chuck Smith. Wow. Um. Do you guys know Char? Yes. Yeah. He's he'll be here next week. By the way. Oh, he's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. So. Wait. You said he's the grandson. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! <gasps> I didn't know. We yeah. didn't know that. His yeah. mom is Chuck Smith's daughter wow yeah impressive yeah it's crazy and they're so humble like they don't they don't care well he's coming here you know hey welcome to pastor (laughs) mike decker thank you to our pastor you know without him we can do nothing (laughs) come on show yourself (laughs) look he looks so handsome ready for our podcast today (laughs) i have a funeral to get ready for oh Oh, man sad news praying for you (laughs) sad news (laughs) okay yeah, that's Pastor Mike, part of you know, the whole thing with Trellis and all of that. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you were saying about Char? Yeah, they're just really humble people that um, just happen to be a part of a, a family that has a, a legacy. But them and all of the other pastors, they don't just like stand up on stage and just preach about seeing change in the city. They do it. Mm-hmm. Like Char was a part of our event last week where we were praying in and for the city mm-hmm. with all the different churches in Costa Mesa. And that's like all the other pastors. They love the city and they, they actually stand for it and care for it. Yeah. That's amazing. We brought some friends from LA. Oh yeah. That oh, night. that's fun. And they were like, wow, that was nice. Yeah. That's cool. For, for him. Uh, he, probably he's listening to us like, hi, David. <laughs> Always. <laughs> but he's, he's a conspiracy it's, theorist. Yeah, but it's hard for him. He used to be a pastor. Mm-hmm. A lot of experience with so many churches. And, you know, they broke his heart and mm-hmm. he doesn't believe in the church anymore. But um, but they're looking, you know, I feel like they walk with him too. And we are the church. So every time we are at the house and we invite them or they invite themselves, <laughs> they come over, and we do church at the house. Awesome. Because uh, we're, God is the center of our lives. Mm-hmm. So he is with us all the That's time. That's so good, yeah. And except when we sin, <laughs> 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 right? He's not mm. there. Um, but yeah, what are we talking about, Cuckoo? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about um, Char, and then we were talking about, no, Albi was a Sir de David. Oh, the, the prayer at uh, Trellis? Yeah. Oh, they, they, the came, they came. They came and yeah. they, they love it. And she was They're like, from LA. What about LA? <laughs> you know, I feel like, oh, yeah. this is awesome. But Costa Mesa, Costa Mesa. Well, you was in the band for Costa Mesa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, one of the things Ian says is that you can't eat an elephant in a one big bite. You have to eat it one small bite at a time, mm. right? So our model is intentional. People are always like, man, you guys should do stuff for Orange County. Like Orange County is great. Like let's pray for Orange County. And we'll say yes, but we get the loss. 
Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's again, let's, big. let's pray specifically because God wants to do it like one person at a time. Mm. And he talks about cities in the Bible all the time. Like Ian always shares this with me. He can go on about cities. He loves it. Well, but he, he says at the end of time in Revelation, um, the church is evaluated by city. Mm-hmm. They're not evaluated by the county or the nation. Mm-hmm. They're evaluated by the city. Mm-hmm. It's like the church of Philippi, like the yeah. church of Ephesus. And they're all different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they have different needs and different things that they're doing wrong and different things that God says, this is really good that you guys have done. And then there's a lot of other um, models like... Um, I think it's like Nehemiah where he commands Nehemiah to like start to build or something like take care of the city and a bunch of other moments in scripture where Jesus or God is talking about the city, the city, the city, and we want to like take these big bites. Mm. So we're in Costa Mesa because God called us here. We're going to do what we're doing here Mm. really, really well. And hopefully what that does is that makes other people think, and say, you know what? I want that for my city mm-hmm. and I'm going to start, even if it's in my neighborhood, I'm going to mm-hmm. start doing that. Mm-hmm. And actually people in LA have been coming to our conference that we do once a year. It's called City on a Hill and they're learning how to do what we do and they're taking it to LA now, which is Well, awesome. you yeah. know, that's exactly um, how the Catholic church started, mm-hmm. right? Because the people of the way, the the little Christians, how they called them before, Mm -hmm. you know, these kings like, oh, these guys are doing something good. Look, they're like multiplying. Yeah. Yeah. Because we need to be like them. Yeah. For our kingdom. They Mm -hmm. look, they're doing good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Little by little. That's an inspiration. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Uh, Let me, let me go to the, the final thoughts. Okay. Yeah. So we've been talking about a surfer boy. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mexican surfer boy. Uh, I never asked you, but you know, you guys, all the stories you've been telling sounds like you're super old, man, <laughs> or something. I know. Like you lived are a you? lot, man. I know. Uh, how old are you and your wife? 25. I'm 25. Wow. Okay. That's impressive. My he wife. can be our son, Beto. I <laughs> guess. <laughs> yeah. Basically, my wife yeah. is um, 27. She's wow. older than me. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Millie's and older she than me, too. Look older than she you. looks like she's like oh my 18. Goodness, yes. I didn't do that on purpose. Like, I wasn't looking for like somebody young. But. <laughs> wow. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's beautiful. Okay. So, I would love to end with prayer. But yes. first, I would love to. Um, I just love the idea that, you know, prayer has. It, it, it guides the mm. action, you know? So, let's say. If five years from now, we can measure, you know, the effectiveness of our prayer. And even if the effectiveness of, let's just call it this, this place, you know, mm-hmm. Christian podcast or what we can do to highlight what God is doing, right? If we focus on that type of prayer, where do you think um, we can see God at work five years from now mm. with the prayer that we can do right now? Mm. Oh, okay. That's a good question. Usually I have to like think, th- think through that for like a week or something. Um, you have five seconds. <laughs> four. We have an Three, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the best way to measure like success in prayer is obviously Jesus encountering people. Mm. And I think he's obviously already doing that with your podcast, but one of the things that I love about the platform you guys are using, like YouTube and Spotify, especially with YouTube, is people can leave a comment. Mm. And I hope that you guys are keeping track of the comments. Mm. But if you're not, that's a really, really great way to start. Is every time somebody says, this podcast, like, you know, encouraged me so much, or like, I heard God say this, you keep it in a document. And then five years from now, you can read all of those comments Mm. and then you see all the people that God touched and God changed, Mm. which would be so cool to like go back and look at. So I think Mm. five years from now, I mean, I assume that it's going to continue to grow because it's already growing, but maybe like thousands of people commenting 
what God did or how Jesus encountered them. So I, I have a beautiful testimony. Mm. Can I share it quickly, Beto? Because okay. I need to go in five minutes. I'm sorry. I was That's like, okay. You're the, the, <laughs> the one we invited. And I just want to share. And probably I say that before. I just ah, the power of what God is doing through this. It's beautiful. And sometimes the devil wants to uh, push me down. Mm-hmm. But like, like you say, just one at a time. Mm-hmm. I have this person call me and it's like, look, um, I'm sick. My body is sick. My bones are sick. And I have, they just told me they have cancer. Mm. And I pray over her life. She was like, over I don't the know. Phone. On the phone, you know, we're talking. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she, with kind of bad reception because she's in Mexico. And she's telling me uh, all this hard life. You know, uh, the stuff, and she's divorced, single mother. And I mean, misery. Her life is like, I'm done. You know, like, so I don't want to talk more, but they're like, her life looks like no hope, zero. And I asked her, You know, Jesus, you know, God. And she's like, I've been so far. Mm-hmm. Like, I get you. But the only way you can be far from Him is sin. So repent, come to Him. He's there knocking at your door. And, and I pray for healing. And for the first time in my life, I experienced the power of God through me. God healed her. Wow. Two weeks after they, they removed the thing, it's like, no, you have no cancer. Wow. It's, it's so like, cool. what? And she went with another two doctors because she can't believe. And like, and glory to God, I tell her. He heals you. I know you. I pray for that. And when I pray, I pray like to this God. And I, I was telling him, you know, because I, I experienced miracles too in my past. And like, I know you, Jesus. I know you can do this. And guess what? He loves you. And that's a proof of how much he loves yeah. you. Wow. And so far, she went to church this past Sunday. Oh, that's awesome. To a Christian church. Mm-hmm. And she's like so emotional telling me, <laughs> you mm-hmm. have, thank you, Millie. Thank you, Millie, because you was there for me. Yeah. And that's what the Christian podcast is doing. If I'm yeah. not doing this, I honestly sharing my life with the, the rest of the world. The good, the bad, the weak, the loving, you know, uh, I'm just... God sent me here for a purpose Mm -hmm. and I just want to be obedient. Honestly, for me, it's sometimes like tough. I don't want to come and sit down here. It's so much fun when I'm Mm -hmm. here. But then I I remember that I have responsibilities at home Mm -hmm. and I left my responsibilities to be here Mm -hmm. because I want to be obedient. And if God transformed my life and healed my life and he's doing that to others, It is the most precious gift for for me, yeah. you know, to to know that more people is experience that experiencing that freedom. Mm-hmm. So it's so hopeful. It's so hopeful, and I'm I'm honestly um, I glorify God yeah. and everything He's doing through us. It, it's it's hard, but we are here for. For our friends, for few people who just listening to this, for you, you know, mm-hmm. what a pleasure to hear your story and know you a little bit more. And um, now when I know someone in it, I know what to do, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm not alone. I have another leaders around me. Mm-hmm. If more people pray for that person, we will be better. Mm-hmm. Because we're better together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Millie knows the slogan well. Yeah. Okay, Keaton, why don't you pray for us? Yeah. And then um, tell tell people how they can support you or Turles or yeah. you know whatever. So, awesome. Yeah. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for all that you've mm-hmm. already done. Thank you for the ways you've already moved in this city in our county. Thank you for the ways that you've moved through this podcast, through Beto, through Millie, even through me and through my wife and our family, Lord. And thank you for all the things that you're going to continue to do, Lord. I always um, just pray this and just remind myself that you care more about all of our needs than even we do. You care even more about our city than we do. 
and you're already at work, you've already begun and you're going to complete it, Lord. So Lord, we just want to stand by and watch and glorify you for what you're going to continue to do, Lord, and we trust you with it. Lord, we ask that even as people are listening right now in this moment, that they would be touched by your Holy Spirit, Mm. that they would encounter you and that their life would change from now on. And I ask for that that would happen for every single podcast that's released with Christian Podcasts as well, Lord, that every podcast would measure hundreds, if not thousands of people, people's lives changed dramatically for the kingdom of God. And Lord, I thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with them and to share my story. And thank you that you've been writing that story all along in my life, in Beto and Millie's life, and in our city. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ah, so good. Thank you, Keaton. So how can people support you? Yeah, um, there's a lot of ways. Um, So we have obviously like a large organization. It's called Trellis. You can go on the Trellis website and look up how to give, how to donate. Um, That's financial, obviously. There's also ways to do that with lovecostamesa.org. And then if you want to be a part of the prayer needs of our city, you can email me at katen at wearetrellis.com. And I'd love to share my prayer requests with you, my personal ones, so you can pray for me. But I can also share the needs of our city so you can be praying for our city as well. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. What is uh, one of your personal needs you want you know, people to know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, our apartment that, you know, the one I told you that I hated with the cockroaches and the rats. So they don't want to give us our deposit back. Mm. In the so name of Jesus. Yeah. Release. Come out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So pray that they would have some kindness because mm. we need it. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Yeah. Okay, so good. My friends, just want to remind you, you're listening to Christian Podcast or watching, because we're everywhere. We're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. It would be super helpful if you subscribe, follow, share the episode with a friend, leave us a comment, and Mm -hmm. maybe even a testimony, Mm -hmm. right? Because I think I'm going to take you on your word. I'm going to start writing them down and like recording what God is doing through this ministry. So that would be super helpful. You know, if anybody wants to leave a comment, please do so. And you can also visit us at Christian Podcast. We we can com. open up to a prayer request too. Yeah. Did you want us to pray for you in a specific thing? Mm. Why not? You know? Yes. Send you us know a, what? I a was text thinking, message and, yeah. and I can share to you my WhatsApp because somehow I work uh-huh. so good with WhatsApp. Some mm-hmm. people hate text messages. I love them. I'm wired into that. I have so many chat groups <laughs> and I love to be in each one of them, you know, every time. And for, I just put silence, my phone, and it's mm-hmm. not peeping all the time. But when I have time in the toilet, uh, <laughs> 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 I can reply, you know, yeah. but I, I just found the space to, That's why you to take connect so long. with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Millie. Yeah, I think I, I'm going to put it on WhatsApp because uh, I think we can connect like the business number to WhatsApp or something. Yeah. Yeah. Because we could start like a prayer chain or yes, something. Yes, yeah. yes, That'll be awesome. And also, what was the other thing? Uh, oh, well, maybe this is for another time. See you. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. <laughs>